Aloha, everybody. This is Gigi from Kauai Community College. In this video, we will be talking about surface area. Let's get started. Okay, so the general idea is for us, again, to um, have a function, y equals f of x, and then we are going to revolve it about the, some axis of rotation to get a solid, right? And then we want to know what's the surface area, meaning the boundary of that 3D shape on the outside there. Now, um, what we again are going to do is to take a look at this little piece right here. We're going to say we're going to divide it up into, you know, so many sections, right? And then we're going to take a look at this one particular piece right there. Um, and if we are going to take that one particular piece and we are going to revolve it, what are we going to get? And um, the new word for today is we are going to get the shape of that um, cut right there in the three-dimensional solid. When um, the solid is being cut by two parallel lines like that, we are calling that um, a fresh stem. Okay, that's the word for today. Okay, so when a solid is being cut by two parallel lines like that, we get a fresh stem. And let's just take a look at uh, what these um, things are, right? The, the red line right there is represented by the length, right, of the curve that comes from right here, right? And then the um, purple is a smaller radius r, and the green there is the bigger radius r, right? So um, from previous video, we know that the area of a fresh term is, we say pi times big R plus little r multiplied by the length. Okay, that's the, that's the surface area of that curve shape. Okay, now um, we're gonna use this um, idea right here to go ahead and um, sum up the surface area of all of those pieces to get the surface area of the whole entire um, solid, okay? Um, so let's define some words here. Okay, so this part, we said the red part is the length and um, that what we have found the length to be, right? Um, I shortcut that, that should have been delta y sub k over delta x squared, right? And we know that later we're, we're gonna, when we take the limit, we have the derivative square, right? And um, suppose that this right here is f sub k, then this is f sub k minus one, meaning the previous function value there. Um, so then the equation for the area would be, uh, remember area of the first term is r equals um, pi times big R plus little r multiplied by the length, right? So um, big R plus small r multiplied by the length, all right? Now, uh, what we will be doing is we are going to take just that particular um, expression there, um, sum it up from k to n, meaning now we have um, n sections of this um, surface area, adding them up. And then what are we going to do after that? And that's the beautiful thing in calculus is we are going to take the limit as n uh, goes to infinity using my magic rainbow pen there, right? And uh, that would give you the surface area of the whole entire solid. And when we use our magic rainbow pen to take the limit as n goes to infinity, we define an integral, okay? Now let's see what that integral will be. Ooh, there's a magic rainbow pen that just appeared right there again. What does that mean? Means that when n is approaching infinity, these little pieces are very close together, right? So that f of x of k is pretty much about roughly the same as f of x of k minus one. So that can be seen as just two times f of x, two f of x values there, okay? Then the integral will be from a to b, right? From a 
to be of now instead of pi, we have two pi f of x. And then this is the length L and the expression for that was square root of one plus the derivative square dx. And that is the equation of um, surface area of a solid, okay? We are going to use that idea and let's apply that to a particular example here. So the function f of x in this case is two times x to the third and it is bounded also by the x-axis from uh, zero to two. So we're looking at this shape right here, okay, where this right here is f of x is equal to two x to the third. Okay, and we are going to revolve it about the x-axis. So we will get this three-dimensional shape right there. Nice, okay, pretty nice looking right there. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and take one particular piece right there, right? And let's remind ourselves again that the area of a first term is pi times big R plus little r times L. Now, big R in this case being 2x to the third um, for the kth term, right? And then little r would be 2x of k minus 1 to the third power, the previous um, function value. Okay, and we have that. Ooh. And then that's the length, right? So why did it become two? Because when we have a million pieces, these two right here are just roughly the same, right? That's the same idea that we discussed earlier. So we have two function value, and then we're gonna go ahead and take the limit as n goes to infinity, and that will give us an integral from, in this case, zero, to two of, and if we clean this up, we would have two times two is four pi x to the third and square root of one plus the derivative square. And remember, if the function is um, two x to the third, then the derivative is bring the three down, you have six x squared. Okay, and that is the derivative of f of x, and that's what goes right here. Okay, now when we evaluate that integral, we will get um, the surface area to be roughly 806.29 square units. Okay, now don't be so quick. You're gonna ask me, well, how do you take the integral of that? And um, that would be a u substitution. That's what was in chapter five. All right, so let's take a look. Zero to two of that. Uh, I am going to let you be this right here. Okay, and that right there is 36 X to the fourth power. So that would be my U. That mean DU is going to be 144 times X to the third DX. But what we have here is four x to the third dx. If I can just factor out the pi and leave it in the front there, right? So then I would say um, four x to the third dx would be one over 36 du, okay? And then what I also wanna do is to go ahead and change the limit of integration. So everything is gonna be in terms of u. I think it's going to be easier in this case, instead of integrating it and then putting it back to x and then evaluate. So I'm going to go ahead and change the limit of integration um, for this problem. So when x is 0, u, of course, is 0. When x is 2, 2 to the fourth power times 36 would be 576. So this integral from 0 to 2 with respect to x is going to be an integral from zero to 576 with respect to u, okay? So this will become one plus u um, and then the um, 
four x to the third dx is one, um, one over 36 du. So I can factor that out right there, right? Now, um, when we take the integral, that would be one over 54 times one plus u to the three half, because square root is the exponent one half. So you add one more, that's three half. And we are evaluating it from zero to 556. When we plug in 556, we have square root of 577 to the third power times pi divided by 54 minus the part where you plug in zero that will just give you pi over 54. Throw that into your calculator and that's how we got the 806.29 previously. And that is it for today.